Okay, well, we're back here with uh, another uh, video lecture on um, correctional jobs and workplace challenges. Uh, just want to say uh, before we get into this too far that you know this is our uh, final uh, topic uh, for this course, and I want to tell you just what a pleasure that it's been working with you. Uh, I hope you can hear me over the snow plows running outside, but we've gotten a pretty good uh, bunch of snow here lately. So in terms of correctional jobs and workplace challenges, the um, first thing that we want to talk a little bit about is, you know, that there are different uh, jurisdictional issues in terms of uh, who people even work for. Now, for example, in my experience, you know, I worked in probation, but I worked in probation in Ohio. Well, there was a certain kind of a contention that was going on at that time because the legislature was trying to wrest control of probation away from the judges and put it underneath uh, the Department of Corrections. And so basically what I'm saying is that you're going to see about three different correctional models in your state and local uh, corrections. Now, like for example, in Indiana, where I'm uh, originally from, is uh, all basically kind of the old way, which is that the judges have a lot of uh, input on who the probation officers are, and uh, uh, you know they work with them pretty closely, so um, they've kind of got a lot of control over uh, who they hire and who they fire, and you know. Uh, who's doing a good job for him, who gets a job for him, and sometimes it can be very political. And for those of you that are thinking about going that direction, um, it's it can be problematic, I mean, in terms of the good old boy system and the politics and, and that type thing. Now, when you get into an urban center, larger city, uh, there's no time for that. They're just, it's too big, it's too busy. Uh, and so it's just all about who interviews best, um, who's got the qualifications, who's got the skills. Uh, and I can say, you know, without hesitation that if you finish your degree uh, in this program that you will be qualified to apply for probation jobs, you know. So uh, basically that's, that's just one area though is the probation. So you had in uh, one town, the town I worked in, which was Canton, Ohio, you had state probation officers and you had county probation officers. The county probation officers worked for the judge and the judge assigned them cases. The state uh, probation officer worked for the DOC and the judge wouldn't assign them any cases. So it was really kind of crazy. Uh, what they're really trying to do is kind of reinvent parole and have probation and parole uh, working together. So this is a long uh, term problem. Uh, the issue was that you didn't have enough probation officers to serve the needs and so the judges were going to the legislature saying give us more probation officers. We need money to hire probation officers and the problem was the legislature, eh, we want to do away with this good old boy system. We want to do away with uh, the judges having control uh, of everybody that works in their courtroom and uh, just make it be based on their qualifications which is really kind of a good idea, but <clears throat> in those early days, I mean, I was opposed to it because I worked for my judge and I was loyal to my judge and, you know, that's just kind of the way that it went. Uh, but over time, you can see that the trend is, especially in some of these really small uh, backwoodsy counties, that uh, it, can be, it can be really bad. For example, there was a case in Tennessee where a judge actually hired his brother-in-law as a probation officer and then the brother-in-law uh, was keeping people on probation to make them pay uh, more fines and costs and then uh, they were funneling that money he was actually splitting the money with the judge until he got caught uh, I can't remember something to do with the IRS so then he turned on his brother-in-law the judge and so they both ended up in trouble so you can see where that's a far extreme example, but you can see where some of these things can happen and, and it's not, not really good. So basically you have either a state level uh, corrections and probation or you have a state or in local level. You have both uh, kind of competing with each other, which is not really that good. 
Um, I noticed that in uh, New Hampshire, for example, in studying for this class, that they have uh, all the different uh, correctional people actually work for the um, state. They don't work for the county. Uh, so I find that very interesting. So basically what's happened is the sheriff no longer has control of uh, the jailers or, or what they call uh, jail officers or uh, uh, people that deal with inmates. So basically interesting. Uh, gonna need to uh, look into that when you're when you're looking for a job. Uh, be sure to be careful about you know who you're gonna answer to and uh, be warned you know that in some cases uh, it's kind of a bad really situation uh, because it's so political. Uh, well looking at it from another perspective and that is the correctional perspective it's real similar on that there's actually uh, three different areas or three different ways that things are done in the uh, correctional field and that is that you have uh, you have county uh, sheriffs who are also in charge of the jail and so they hire and fire everybody and here again all the uh, correctional staff uh, are uh, their employees and a lot of them it's patronage it's who pounded signs you know my son needs a job here's some money to get you elected as soon as you get elected be sure to give my son a job so that can be kind of bad. Here again though on the larger scale again in the larger urban communities it's not like that because once again they just need people really bad and um, that good old boy system actually ends up putting egg on their face if they're not careful because you get people that aren't competent uh, just happen to be somebody's relative they're not really qualified uh, and they make a major mistake and that makes you look bad in the newspaper so uh, those are the kind of things that uh, that happen you know now uh, another type of uh, program that I understand they have in Tennessee is called a regional jail program and a regional jail program uh, basically it's kind of a consortium among the different sheriffs they all work together and they hire people that are in in charge of these regional jail jails and so they transport uh, their worst offenders that are awaiting um, trial or sentencing to these regional jails so that they uh, can take the pressure off on a lot of these local small jails uh, that are violating um, some federal laws because they have too many inmates and the jail is too small so now they have kind of a safety valve that they can send them to a regional jail. That's one way of doing it. Now Kentucky they have a whole nother way which is interesting which is they have an elected official called a jailer. He's actually a separate person. It's interesting in Kentucky because they have constables, they have jailers, they have sheriffs. These are all different elected officials and they all have their own uh, authority. They're an elected official so they have their own budget uh, now the lowest person on the pe the pecking order is the constable, and basically they just uh, handle townships. They also serve court orders, they serve warrants, they serve all kind of papers. That's their main job, and it's a very low-paying job. A lot of them only get paid based on the actual uh, documents that they serve, so it can be extremely um, low pay uh, and uh, poor. Uh, position but it can be a starting position it can be a for a way of getting your foot in the door and so it could be like your first attempt at working uh, in the correctional system so it's, that's not to say that it's a bad thing uh, but uh, everybody has to start somewhere now here again political you get elected to this job same way with the jailer the jailer so in a way to me it's almost another layer of politics and I'm not so sure how well it works um, but um, uh, it's just the way they do it. Now, uh, as we mentioned earlier, in New Hampshire, for example, uh, they have a system where all the jail type aspects are handled by the Department of Corrections. So not only are the prisons handled by the DOC, but also uh, the jails are handled that way too. Uh, so basically, uh, it's a very interesting uh, thing that so many of these different jobs uh, can be handled uh, differently depending on the political winds or um, the urban requirements 
uh, it all just depends on, on how it gets handled. Uh, so as you're trying to navigate this and try to find that first job, you know, you need to be aware that this situation uh, could be problematic. Well, we're going to come back with another short video on um, uh, some of the stressors and so the day-to-day -day work that different people do, such as probation officers, correctional officers, uh, and this type of thing. So we'll be back in a little bit with yet another um, presentation. Hope you enjoyed this. Hang in there. You're almost done.